My name's Sue Aldred. I live here on this property with my husband Michael. It's a Trust for Nature property. It's 100 acres and um, we bought it around about five years ago now. Yeah. It was completely and utterly devastated. Uh, it burnt, every single acre burnt. Um, we were actually renting a property at the bottom of the road, um, which we stayed and defended on the day. Uh, but I stood down there and watched this place burn and it was heartbreaking. Um, we came up the following morning and it was like somebody had dropped a nuclear bomb. It was utterly silent, it was black, it was still smoking, and there was just nothing. And um, it was very, very hard. I think from those initial moments of, of despair and, and almost wanting to walk away from it um, came that, I suppose, sense of responsibility um, and the love of the land that we wanted to continue to care for it. It was very hard not to panic at first. It was very hard not to think, oh, I must do something, you know, I've got to get in here and, and do something. Um, but there was nothing we could do, uh, really. And I suppose one of my first... Uh, reactions was to start monitoring and I was astonished that within two weeks there were these tiny little shoots of green appearing in this massive devastation. Um, grass trees and the lamandras and slowly but surely we began to get little epicormic buds on the trees um, and it was just amazing just to see that and the more that happened the better I felt, the better we both felt. Dr Randall Robinson, I'm from Victoria U University in the Ecology and Environmental Management Group. The first thing you would do after a fire is to basically stabilize the area. Uh, the last thing you want to be doing is disturbing the soil anymore. So the seeds of the native plants are there, the, seed, the spores of the mosses are there. It's basically don't get in there and disturb the ground. This is just another example of re good regeneration after the fire. These are mosses. This is a little thing actually called fire moss, and they provide the initial stabilization and allow the other plants to get established uh, and regenerate. After about 10 years, these, plant, these mosses and lichens will pretty much disappear. It's an excellent time for targeted weed control so if you do see patches of weeds coming up, you can selectively get in there and control those. It's actually an excellent time immediately after a fire to target weed control. So we did take some action. We did a lot of hand weeding. <laughs> um, I've never seen cape weed the size of those cape weeds. They were like, I don't know, trees. <laughs> and we, we then began to realize that actually the cape weed was doing quite a good thing in holding the soil together where, where there was no uh, indigenous stuff that was competing with it. So as the months progressed, I began to feel more comfortable with taking a kind of a watching brief. And really, I think a lot of my action has been to monitor uh, what's regenerated. In that 12 to 18 um, month period, there was also massive flowering of a lot of our native orchids. Um, with a lot of those, they're suppressed by the standing vegetation, but once released from that competition after a fire, they come up and they flower like mad. So things we hadn't seen in a long time were flowering. Uh, the spider orchids, the sun orchids, things like that were just massive carpets uh, everywhere. It was very hard, but, but I think um, I'm also involved with our local land care group and I was present on a few properties very early on in the piece where people with the best will in the world wanted to come in and help and I realised very quickly that what they were doing was actually not helping but actually being quite destructive so they would be pulling timbers off slopes, they would be um, you know, burning stuff, they'd be going in there and planting a whole load of stuff that, that now I realise, well you've seen the, the density of the regeneration, we, we didn't really need to go in there and do any of that stuff. But really, truly, I mean, I've been astonished at the power of nature to get on and do its, do its thing. What we'll start seeing is that the forest will start to resemble 
uh, what it used to be. The trees will be fully leafed out. Uh, the, the, most of them will start to flower again. Uh, the animals will start moving in. The understory will still be fairly dense, um, probably 15 to 20 years down the track. Those initial fire colonizers, the acacias, the wattles, um, many of the ones that come up immediately after fire and very densely take about that long uh, before they've completed their life cycle. So that'll take a little while. But depending on the forest that you're in, it may be 20, uh, 20 years uh, before we see what we saw immediately the day before the fire.